It is time once again for more Friend Sim 2. This time we are tackling Volume 9. We meet some old friends once again, and we help them out with some revolutionary stuff. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff if you want to see more. Let's get right on into the video. Welcome. We are now back once again with more Friend Sim 2. After we got done with helping out Amicia realize his calling of being a rebel, literal rebel rouser, things took a turn for the dramatic. The screen, the, the title screen changed. And I think this is insanely cool. This is a bop, by the way. I love this. This is great. I love this background as well. The artist design, great. But we still haven't found Malik, which was our initial thing. Oh, this is such a good, such a good beat. I have figured out that at this point, in order to just clear it all, I need to finish. I need to finish this as soon as possible. We have gotten to a point where it's like we're at a penultimate moment. So it's gotta happen, right? It's gotta happen. So, let's get into it, yeah? Let's not waste any more time. I believe we were last on, I think, chapter 9. No, volume 9. And so, uh... Yeah, let's get right on into it. Let's continue. I'm excited. Oh, Polypa. Polypa. However you say her name. I don't know. Regardless, I'm excited. Extremely. This is going to be really good. I feel I have a good feeling. So, onward to Volume 9 of Finally Machined Revolution. Oh, wow. This is a lot of content warnings. Okay. Legitimately. This route has con contains content warnings for depiction and discussion of state institutional violence, depiction of firearms, depiction of blood, depiction and discussion of death, discussion of mass murder, discussion of child death, route has action sequences, and contains flashing lights. If you are epileptic, I would advise you just to skip this in th the entirety of Route 9. It's okay. Don't, you know... Don't risk it. Don't risk it. This is your one and only warning. Player discretion is advised. And viewer discretion is advised as well. Don't take it lightly. Let's continue. We have 17... Oh, bruh. Alright. <clears throat> you spend the day uncomfortably crammed into a drain pipe until the sun goes down enough for it to be safe to travel again. Once more, it's nighttime, and you're still wandering the streets of Everdin. The neon wash settles over you in a haze that never leaves your vision, even when you close your eyes. The last time you were on Alternia, you don't remember being in a city that felt so... big. The little suburb of Alkla was nothing by comparison. The weird thing is that even in the city, you see abandoned buildings all over the place, a constant reminder that everyone has a, complete, has a couple decades worth of life before they end up sent off-world. Even if there are those rare exceptions, mostly through circumstances or luck, everyone has the same fate in the end. You can't just leave them here to deal with it. They deserve the best chance they get they can get to fight against the Empire. You've got the feeling that the Empire is probably looking for you too. In spite of, or maybe because of, your best efforts, you've managed to poke your non-existent nose into all kinds of new things. And now, you feel like you're at an impasse. It's been days, and you're not any close to understanding how to get any of your powers back. That is a big like point MSP reader has and this is why I chose revolution initially because if your powers are gone bud guess what you can't really whisk anyone away that's all false promises so the best you can do is help them out in the moment for now but yeah MSP reader still doesn't have their powers and this is a little concerning instead you're just drifting from encounter to encounter stumbling in and out of situations of varying degrees of lethality 
It's not really all that different from how you used to do things when you first came to Alternia, or on Earth for that matter. You can't help but wonder about those friends back on Earth, and whether or not you'll ever be able to see them again. The noise of all these thoughts is almost enough that you don't notice the van that's been following you for the past three blocks. <sighs> you quickly jump around the corner and onto a cross street, only to find yourself blocked by a narrow line of parked scuttle buggies. Oh boy, we're getting jumped. Wait, what? Oh, 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 oh! I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm too busy monologuing. The man screeches to have stopped a few yards ahead, and the driver's slide doors open. You're ready for anything. Well, okay, ready to run screaming away from the Imperial Snatch and Grab team that's here for you now, apparently. Wait a minute. Malik! Oh, holy shit! It's you! Yeah, you almost ran me over, you bum! Malik! The cerulean face breaks into a massive grin as he rushes towards you. Before you know what's happening, Malik has you in his arms and squeezes you in a surprisingly tight hug. I missed you! Thought I was never gonna see you again! This is amazing! I saw you walking, and I thought, wow, maybe it's them, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> wow, maybe it's them. Time to run them over. <laughs> Bro. Yep, that's you. There. Actually, you weren't super clear what you were to Malik. Well, I mean, we could talk about that if you want. See where this goes. Hey. Hey. Sure, bud. Or maybe perhaps, maybe now, maybe now isn't the best time? For one thing, you're still a little bit freaked out that he almost hit you with his admittedly very cool looking van. Now I've let you go and steps back blushing. Oh, shit! Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Sometimes it's tricky to gauge distance, you know? He laughs nervously and grins. But, hey, you're here now, so... Actually... Malik shuffles his feet. I don't want to sound weird about this, but... Do you want to come back with me? Like, to my place? Fuck! I mean, uh, not like that. Uh, not if you don't want to, anyway. I mean, what? It, we were looking for you, bud, so... Yeah. You know what? Yeah, why the hell not? You tell Malik that you'd be delighted to check out his cool van and go in an unspecified location with him. Okay, that all sounds pretty bad, but you're an adult and you can make your own decisions. Cool! Well, hop on in. It's a little bit of a drive. Ooh, nice. You slide in the back of the van, which is surprisingly spacious. Malik hops in after you, grinning. Damn, feels like forever since I saw you last. Oh, hey, give me your palm husk. Wait, what? Malik reaches out, reaches out a palm and makes a give me motion with his hand. Reluctantly, you hand over the burner palm husk that Tagora gave you back. Well, you think it's only been a couple days, but it feels like forever ago. Sorry, I'm not trying to be weird, just... Mal quickly pries the back of your palm musk off and squints at the inside, scrunching his face up. After a moment, he pulls a small light out of his pocket, selects a spot on the palm musk, and presses the device into place. There's a low buzzing noise, and... Does that mean it's working? Malik nods, and after a few seconds, he snaps the backing back onto your palm husk and hands it to you again. There. You're all set now. What's that, an anti-tracker? All set with? Well, okay. So I wasn't telling you the whole truth before. I didn't just run into you randomly. I've been tracking you. Okay, not gonna lie, that's a little weird. How long was he going doing that for? You know what? You know what? Never mind. You're going to trust that he had a good reason. Malk nods solemnly. It was way too easy to pick up your signal and track you. You've been all over the place, huh? Empire isn't gonna be happy that you're fucking this shit up, you know. Malk looks thoughtful for a moment before his easy grin returns. Anyway, let's head on back. I'm so happy you're back. I can't wait to tell the others what's going on. Oh, yeah, the others. You hadn't thought about them much. To be honest, you wonder if they're going to be as enthusiastic to see you as Malik apparently is. I... not They'll sure. be so happy. I hope so. Since I'm working with the Rebels, Malik crawls over the center console at the front of the van and sits in the driver's seat, but staring, starting the engine with a roar. Wait, didn't he have a, didn't he have a, driver's, a driver before? He thought he had a lot more people helping him. Malik shrugs and shakes his head. It's a long story. Not a whole lot of folks left doing what we do. I'll let Polipa explain it. Polipa. That makes sense. Polipa. Oh, Polipa is with them too? Yeah, and figured her as much of a rebel, more of a free agent. Oh yeah, she is the best. Kind of our leader, I guess. We've been working against the Empire for almost a sweep now. Nice. Met them through the underground music scene, you know? 
Yeah, you remember that. He was in Daria's band, right? Malak nods front seat, keeping his eyes on the road. Hell yeah! Hell motherfucking yeah! Neat. Malak lapses into a pleasant silence as he focuses on the road ahead. After two minutes, he breaks the quiet again. So, what are you doing back? I mean, I know a little from Tizius and Daria. Okay, maybe a lot. So in other words, you don't need me to tell you. Okay, basically everything. <laughs> I to say, you don't need me to tell you then if you know them. I'm just trying to be friendly, sorry. <laughs> Oh, you appreciate the effort, and it is good to see him again after so long. You missed him. You can practically see the blush on the side of his face, even from the back of the van. Really? Well, I missed you too. It really is good to see you. Yeah. After another solid 20 minutes of driving in circles and doubling back to lose anyone who might be following the van, Malik finally pulls in front of a massive building lined with dark windows. Yeah, this totally isn't inconspicuous. Like, really? Everything else is all like color eyes and now this is faded yeah sure <laughs> where is this place it looks like a giant office building yeah it is exactly that alleged lacerators in training used to use this place for a while before the last of them got sent off world now it is just a big empty place that no one wants to touch all kind of stories about how haunted it is i might have encouraged some of those rumors Fair enough. He smiles sheepishly and walks forward to hold the door for you. Walking into the lobby feels strange. You get a weird prickly feeling all up the back of your neck, as if the presence of all the people who aren't there anymore is weighing on you. Don't let don't let it set in, MSP reader. You and Malik climb a set of stairs in the back, walking in silence to find reach one of the topper floors. The door looks locked, but Malik walks forward and works a hidden cache somewhere catch somewhere. You hear a loud click and Malik swings it open. After you. Hmm. The floor of the office building is lined with weapons piled haphazardly into the stacks on the rotting carpet. Ahead, you can see the city glittering outside of the large windows, twinkling like a beacon in the Alternian night. You're not gonna lie, when you thought Rebel Hideout, you were definitely picturing something a little bit more in the basement. I guess... we needed some place with a good network connection that was easy to get to. We don't exactly get to be picky these days. Fair enough. He grins and pats you on the shoulder. Plus... This is way nicer than a smelly sewer, right? He has a point, actually. Now that the initial wonder of the place has begun to fade, you notice two very familiar looking people are talking in the corner of voices. You, of course, instantly recognize your good friends Paul, Polypa and Tagiri. Oh, yeah, they, they were friends, so that makes sense. The main character wears it for the second and third seasons, and it's a very rare collectible. You found it in a goddamn dumpster. Hey, the dumpsters are perfectly okay to find collectible items. That doesn't matter. It's basically new. Yeah, sure. Basically new. So, as Paula finishes her sentence, she looks up to see you standing there next to Malik. She steps forward into the middle of the office floor, picking her way, her way carefully around the pile of guns. Then she unloads. Uh, oh, hey, hey, no gun, no gun unloading. Good unloading or bad unloading? I need to know. You! What the fuck are you doing back here? Sick, it's you bad. You think you can just, what? Just come walking back in? Yes, and that's what I'm currently doing right now. Uh, hi, Polypa. How's she doing today? Don't fucking talk to me like nothing's changed. You were gone for so long. None of us knew how to reach you. You can't tell if she's starting to cry or not. Her whole body is shaking as she points a finger outward towards you like a particularly accusatory knife. Is this the same voice actor as the one with Connell? If so, that doesn't give me much hope for, um... For, for my wife, Boulder. Since, are we just gonna cast all of the Olive Bloods in the same voice actor that I wasn't exactly frothing at the mouth for initially either? Whatever. We needed your help. I needed your help. And you weren't there. Yeah, that's what happens when um the powers that be send you to another dimension. She doesn't say another word. The only sound that comes out of her mouth is a frustrated grunt as she turns and walks out of the room. Sick. Well, that didn't go as expected. I, I expected as much. You turn to Tagiri, who regards you coolly. Hey, you, you, at least you and him are still good, right? Tagiri shrugs. My Moirail is essentially correct. You were gone for an exceedingly long time. I can't say I blame her for her heated response. Fair enough. Okay, but you have a reason for being gone for so long. Did, okay, Malik, did you not, like, tell them the reasoning as to why, you know... We were gone for so long, sitting there with your glazed fucking expression. Like, 
if you knew as much as you know, you would know that we left because of a good reason. There were powers that were beyond our comprehension and our ability to change that sent us to another dimension. We couldn't exactly call somebody. Like, what the hell? <laughs> and what would that be? You, uh, well, it's kind of a long story. Spoken like someone with no true answer. I see. Tigiri shakes his head, looking more disappointed than anything else. I'm going to go talk to my Moiril now. Maybe. Put in a good word. Tigiri doesn't respond. He's shaking his head over turning and walking away. Sick. Guess that didn't go quite like you expected it would. This is too bad. Yeah, you aren't really sure what to do with this. On one hand, it really hurts your polypa talking like you did that, talking to you like that. But on the other hand, she's kind of got a point. You did abandon her, and even if you couldn't make it back at first, you obviously can now. It's if only if only you'd been more on target coming back to Alternia. Maybe things would have been smoother. At least you'd know where everyone was. It happens. Sometimes you lose touch with people. He shrugs and shakes his head. Sucks globes. Indeed. Anyway. You want to see my special room? Sure. Wait, is this the euphemism for something? Is he hitting on you? No, he blushes. No! It's just a place where I do all my work. Oh, okay. Well, okay, since he's being so nice about it. Malik's special room turns out to be a back office of some kind that has been absolutely packed full of computer equipment. You can practically feel the electricity being used by this place. Crackling electricity. Monitors display schematics and lines and lines of code. Notes cover a nearby cork board, and you swear you see several economy-sized cases of grub juice on the floor. This is where the magic happens. Uh, by which, I mean, this is where I do most of my work for the Rebels. I'm not good with guns or anything. So, this is what I can do. He walks over and sells into what looks like an al the alternate equivalent of a gamer chair and taps his keyboard, bringing the nearby monitors bringing to life. Alright, first questions with Malek. We finally got to you, bud. So, how's this place even running? This place went off the grid when it shut down, but we brought it back online. Tapped into the hard lines nearby for power and networking. Nice thing about this being an abandoned Legis Corpus building. It isn't on the Imperial Surveillance Network. So, we hide in plain sight, and I've got all the toys I need. This stuff all looks incredibly complicated. You're trying very hard not to accidentally touch anything. Yeah, it's complicated. But it's also important, so... This is kind of my whole jam, you know? Um, you is this still around? Yeah, he is around somewhere. Probably hiding in the server closet where it's warm. That's good. For some reason, you keep getting the weird feeling that Lucy are just regularly killed by the Empire when trolls get twisted or an age. What the hell makes you think that? That is horrible. Because that's what seems to happen. Every single motherfucker we come across has their Lucis is either dead or, or gone or something. Yeah, you're not sure either. I mean, all the genocide and eugenics and everything is one thing, but you draw the line at killing Lucy. I mean. The genocide in eugenics is pretty bad, don't you think? Wait, that came out wrong. No, it's not a squint at you. Okay, definitely time to change the subject abruptly. Um, Paula seems kind of mad. Oh, yeah, she is. Don't think I've seen her this pissed off in a long time. That's less than encouraging, but you really didn't mean to leave for so long. It's just that things kept happening and you ran into so much weird shit you had to deal with. Malik nods quietly. Oh, yeah. It's whatever. I wouldn't take it personally. It's hard not to. You feel bad about leaving your numerous Moirails behind for so long. Have you considered maybe... being a little more choosy with your quadrants? I mean, I'm not judging, but maybe. Wait for the right person, you know? He grins at you and taps his nose with a wing. Just a suggestion? Fair enough, with a broad grin, Alex starts typing furiously on the keyboard. Actually, uh, we were in the middle of planning something before. I saw you were back on planet, so I figured I'd go check in on you. Uh, just as friends, of course. Sure, but what is it they were planning, exactly? Malik pauses his typing, glances over you with an eyebrow quirk. I guess you're someone I can trust. It's hard to know sometimes, but yeah. I don't think you're someone the Empire is much a fan of. 
yeah, not really getting that sense in general. You might have brought, your, brought yourself a little bit of time earlier with Galax Hell, but it's not like you've exactly been lying low. Yeah, you really haven't. Okay, why don't you go way back outside? I need to do something really quick. Okay. I wasn't able to ask all the questions, but it is what it is. You walk back out into the large, all-open office floor, then stand by the window, looking down at the shift and shining city below. It's in spite of everything, Alternia really can be a beautiful place sometimes. It is. I very much love the architecture, as I keep saying. It's a very lovely place to look at. It's just like Florida and California. A beautiful place to look at from, like, a satellite view and an airplane view. But getting it, being in there physically, it's horrible. It's dog shit. It's hard not to think about all the lives that those lights represent. All the trolls who are struggling under the same empire. <sighs> Mesmerizing, isn't it? You turn to see Tigiri standing there, looking at you evenly. Yeah, you say, kind of is. You were just thinking about all the people living in the city. Yeah, that's something I've been thinking about a lot too lately. He doesn't bother to explain this further. Instead, he walks up and stands next to you. You notice he's got a rifle slung over his back. So, uh, what's that about? A master of the blade should never be without his blade. Right, but that's not a blade. It's definitely a gun. It, it's a metaphor! <laughs> Alright, sick. Tagiri gets really quiet all of a sudden, pressing his hand up against the window and leaning forward. How's he been, anyway? It feels like it was just yesterday that you were hanging out and watching anime with him and Polypa. Tagiri grunts and shakes his head. There's been a lot happening. No, oh, like what? I'd rather not talk about it, actually. You respect a man's rights to his secrets, right? I don't know about MSPA reader, but I do. Oh yeah, you, you guess so. It's just that you're really good at listening to people's problems. That's like your only actual skill. Tigiri doesn't respond, and there's something far off in his eyes that you can't quite place. No, not right now, anyway. Fair enough. Okay, everything is all set on my end. You and Palipa ready to get geared up? Tigiri shrugs and turns away from the window. Of course. A true warrior is always ready. Okay, so what was that all about? You know Tagiri's deal was always basically being a living anime stereotype, but it feels like there's something genuinely dark underneath it now. That isn't something I think I can talk about. It isn't my place. Fair enough. Cool, nothing ominous about that at all. So what is it that you're getting ready to do? Weapons. Weapons. Paula Paul walks in and she looks different than before. For one thing, she's wearing body armor and over an old tank top, and she's holding a rifle that looks like kinda like one Tagiri had on his back. Weapons? What does she mean by that? <laughs> Paul rolls her eyes. It means what you think. We need weapons. We need ammo. Weapons. Ammo. We need a supply drop. She looks at Malik in a way that feels very pointed and looks directly at you. Need a lot of things. But you gesture around the, f the floor, which appears to be literally covered with weapons and ammo, and Polypa rolls her eyes and walks over to one of the crates, kicking with the tip of her boot. Because you don't know what you're looking at. Half of these are so rusted out they won't even fire. Corroded ammo, dead rounds, worthless guns. You think she's made a point pretty well? Her rebellion is running on scraps at this point, down to whatever bits and pieces they can cobble together. Steal. Or buy off the black market. Are you getting it now? Of course you'd know this if you'd stuck around. You look real quick before things get too look real quick before things get too crazy. You really are sorry for disappearing the way you did. It was it was sort of your fault, but she's gotta believe you that you didn't mean to just vanish for so long. I don't gotta believe shit. You wanna apologize? Great. I don't have to accept it. Maybe you're different now. Maybe not. My morals don't abandon me. Don't leave me alone. She frowns and glances away in the direction that Tagiri left the room. The conversation, if you can even call it that, lasts in awkward silence for a few minutes. Eventually, Tagiri comes back. This time, he's wearing the same kind of body armor that Polypa had on, and he's, uh, he's holding his rifle. You mean to ask before, what happened to his sword? You seem really attached to that thing, and you haven't seen it at all. Tigiri fixed you with a cold stare. I don't want to talk about that, okay? Remember what I said about secrets? I don't know what's a secret and what ain't. Paul Paul leans over and puts a hand on his shoulder. She doesn't say anything, but Tigiri nods quickly. It's, it's fine. Thanks. He puts a hand over hers and nods again. His face set. For a second, you see something that looks really vulnerable, and then it's gone, replaced with the same set, set jaw as before. Malik, are we ready to go? You make the trip back downstairs in extremely awkward silence, with Paulipa and Tagiri walking next to each other and purposely ignoring you. Malik stays next to you, at least so not everyone hates you. It's pretty cold comfort at this point, though. 
in the van, you end up sitting in the back of Paul Puntagiri. Definitely a situation which isn't even a little bit extremely awkward. So, what exactly are we going to do? We are on an important job. You are an annoying parasite. We're going to meet a supplier of ours. A black market contact. Don't tell them that. It's fine. What are they going to do? I know you're mad, but they're coming along. They at least deserve to know what foes they'll be facing. I've been helping out the rep- Bruh, don't be all pissy at me because- Okay, wait a minute. Pause. Wait a minute. I think MSPA Reader is missing something very important. I do not think it is their fault specifically. Could they have maybe jump-started their memory in order to remember that their people are there? Back in Friendsim timeline? Maybe. But guess what? The in you all have s the ones who have seen my pest request playthrough know that the MSP reader got their mind wiped by reading all of <laughs> Homestuck and then by Doc Scratch and got sent to the Homestuck universe. And then it was only with the help of, I think, Ultimate Dirk that we got all of our memories back. So we didn't have, we didn't, we had no fucking clue what to do. Don't be laying this shit on us, bud. They ain't our fault. <laughs> you got, you, you, I think it's one of those things where it's like, you gotta fucking believe that we didn't choose to leave voluntarily. Things just sort of happened, you know? The whims of fate and how they be, we can't just pop ourselves back in if we got our mind wiped. We didn't have the power to go back to this timeline or this universe or whatever until we got the powers of the first guardian. So, fucking, how about you lay the fuck off? Holy shit. We <laughs> fucking get, fucking chill out. Good grief. G remove the stick from your ass and fucking think logically. There was, has to be a reason as to why a person leaves and drops off the face of the earth. Fuck. From the front of the van, Malik clears his throat loudly. Shouldn't be any foes at all. It's just a simple deal. Tetrarch set this up himself. Wait, Tetrarch? Something like that feels so familiar. Tetrarch. Who is Tetrarch? Who is Tetrarch? They're a bronze blood who helps us out. They're connected. Ex Moirails with that one arena stickball player. Oh yeah, Tetrarch. Yeah. Um, yeah, the dude who was um Moirails with um Zephros. You know exactly who he means, Zephros, and you know exactly what he's been up to lately. Precisely. Although I fail to understand how those specifics matter. Well, you talked to Zephros, and it's pretty broken up with the scandal he thought went through. You tried to help him through it. You think maybe he's playing help chicks with their protest music? Yeah, a scandal because his ex Moirail turned out to be a major rebel organizer. Tigiri laughs and shrugs his shoulders. Sometimes, the irony of life truly is inescapable. Don't stop it, Tigiri. You swear you see a smile break on Paul of his face, even if it's only for a second. Doesn't matter. Our contact relationship drama isn't important. He's got guns. Well, his connections have guns. This is the first time we're dealing with this supplier. After the last one got raided. Gary goes quiet again and looks down at his feet. Legislacerators. Damn it all. Alright, we need to we need to cover this. Is it Lacerators or Lacerators? I think it's either or, but it makes sense for Lacerators. Laceration, as I said before. He doesn't explain this comment at all, but you're guessing that further prodding wouldn't be appreciated. After a little while longer, you feel the van start to slow down and pass over a series of speed bumps. Outside, you see the city fade into shadow as you pull into some kind of covered structure. We're here. Okay, Malik, you stay here. Tagiri and I will handle the actual deal. And what about you? I don't give two fucks what you do. Okay. Just stay close to us if you're going to insist on tagging along. We know what we're doing. You don't. Alright. You step out of the van and walk deeper into what looks like a dimly lit parking garage under a building. Nearby, Polypa and Tagira are shifting their weapons nervously. About 30 yards down from the van, you start to feel very vulnerable. I don't like this. I don't trust our contact. Even if the Tetrarch did set things up. Yeah, no fucking kidding. Somewhere in the shadows of the garage, you hear the sound of an engine starting. A dark gray car rolls out forward with windows almost completely blacked out. The car stops a few yards away and the doors will reveal a troll in a dark suit and sunglasses. Stylish, but also extremely sus. You're the ones that Tetrox said would be coming. 
Holy Bogosian, Tagiri Kauper. Yeah, what fucking of it? Do you have the armaments we're paying so handsomely for? The troll smiles and shushes her next to from side to side. Oh, yeah. I've got the armaments all right. As soon as the funds are transferred. Paul leans over and speaks into the microphone attached to her body armor. Okay, Malik, wait one second. You, do you have the sample? The troll shrugs and motions someone in the car. Another troll steps out of the large black rifle case. Walking forward, she sits it down on the floor of the parking structure and opens the case to reveal a long sniper rifle of some kind. As promised, we've got two of these. Fresh from the fleet security forces if, armory. If it ain't an op or a machina, I don't want it. That wasn't everything we agreed to, and you know it. Of course. We've got six automatic rifles and 3,000 rounds of ammunition. Thing is, the price is going to be a little bit more than we told the Tetrarch. The troll shrugs and taps her hand absently, Paul up bristles. I have a stark feeling that things are going to pop off. So it's time to pop a save. Why? That wasn't what we discussed. Why are you changing things? You know how it is. You run into complications. Things aren't looking good. We need to do our- we need to do our talk no jutsu, Kalipa, I think. I don't like this. There's something wrong. Something the matter? We don't trust you. Can't imagine why not. Don't trust your Tetra. He's not our anything. Touchy. Well, the price is double what we said before. Unless you want this to go to someone else. Someone that's principled. I'm telling you, this feels wrong. You back away a little bit. No one really seems to be paying you much mind at all and starts to look around the parking structure. Hey, just a real quick thing. Where are all the couple black vans parked near the entrance? You see Paul's eyes go wide. Fucking bastard! Without warning, she raised her rifle. <laughs> Everything happens at once. Oh, oh, dodge! Get your fucking head down! Paul bent over screens to the microphone and bought Now, get ready to get us the fuck out! We gotta go! Rush over to a little concrete barrier. Uh, da, 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 da. You can read all that. Um, down in structure, but went around down the uh, end of the parking garage. You see a group of trolls wearing red goggles, heavy body armor. Shit, we gotta move. Fucking ledges lacerators. You keep staring at the trolls. The trolls then in the parking garage. Just to get grabs the back of your hoodie and pulls you down roughly. Good thing too, because a hail of bullets ripped through the space where your head just was. Keep your fucking head down. You want to get shot? No, not today. You very much do not. You gotta go. Whoa. Whoa. Any time would be fucking good. Two of the ledges lacerators down, go down. The welts of teal coming from their heads. You stick to your sick to your stomach. You can smell the blood. Hey, come on! Gary reaches out and grabs you on the shoulder. You can see him shaking. He's definitely holding it together better than you are right now. We need to get to the van. Stay close. Down, you crush him like into Gary, hoping his by arm will at least provide a little bit of cover for you. Gotta go. Shoo. I'm a freaking blur here! The van's up ahead. You're surprised that none of the Vladislav's lacerators are trying to fire in the van, but Paul and Tagira are more immediate threat. Malik, I hope you're ready to go! You hit the side of the van, Tagiri lands heavily next to you, firing his rifle as he moves. Wah! We gotta go! Fall in the van, sounds bullets hits the metal side and rings out all around you. At least the van seems armored that. Fucking drive! Pablo Sam's door should find his door so full floor. Keep your asses down. No idea how good the armor on this thing is. A sudden jolt the van starts moving. The engine starts to mount the guns towards the exit. Hold on. This is it. You brace yourself against the side of the van. Paul Pen to Gary both flying flat in their bags, holding their rifles close to their chest. So that's what you do. Right until you head around the corner, but too quickly the van whips and your head collides with the Well shit. God damn it, now we're back I here. must say, I admire your persistence. I really do. That you continue to put yourself in these positions in spite of it having no tangible benefit whatsoever. No, shut up, shut up, shut up! How can you say that you're not making a difference when you obviously are? No, keep telling yourself that. It makes it more true. 